Good afternoon. I'm Shirley Tokash Verico. I'm the curator here at Buffalo Arts Studio. And I am with Muhammad Zaman, a wonderful Western New York artist who is a resident artist here at Buffalo Arts Studio. And we are here today as part of the um, WNED, WBFO, Making Buffalo Home Project, which is highlighting stories of people who have come to Buffalo from all around the world, uh, whether it was 100 days ago or 100 years ago. See the nice senior citizens. And we want to thank um, uh, our sponsors. Making Buffalo Home is supported by Rich Products and the Rich Family Foundation. So thank you. So we're going to spend some time talking to you today, Muhammad, about your techniques. And um, you're going to paint while we do this. How do you feel about that? Um, I feel okay. Uh, thank you for having me, Shirley and W. Or NAD and WBFO. And this is exciting. I know I've got, I've had the pleasure of watching you paint. Go ahead and start. Go ahead and just take a deep breath and we'll do this. Um, and I know, Muhammad, that you have painted live uh, in front of people before because not only are you a studio artist here, Muhammad has also worked um, on large public murals and commissions. So he has painted in front of people before. He also did a live painting here at Trimania, one of our fundraising events. But as we've noted, he hasn't had to talk while painting before, so that's a, that's a new, a new uh, thing for him. So, Muhammad, why don't you start and um, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing here, your style. Um, I'm mixing three languages, uh, English, Bangla, and um, Arabic, which are my background. And um, my uh, lettering or my art is a... Uh, Urban calligraphy, which, which composed of three languages, English and Bangla and Arabic. So over here, we're writing uh, beautiful buffalo. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, hopefully, throughout the interview, I'll try my best to finish the canvas. And you repeat, right? Yes. You repeat the messages over and over again. Um, and I think it's wonderful. We can see it down here. And in the painting behind you, people can see a finished product. You layer over and over and over again. Yes. And it's not just the painting, right? You're thinking about these ideas? Yes. Um, so I take a sentence or, uh, or, or a word or um, a quote, which is uh, you know, something that is uh, inspiring to me. And um, I put it on a, a sketch um, first, then um, keep repeating it on, a, on canvas until the canvas is finished, or I feel that it's finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think what's interesting to me as a curator and someone that looks at your art, uh, there is no beginning and end very often. Yes. Right? You layer it until it's, it's difficult to see where the start and, and yes. the end is. Yes. Um, so why, why calligraphy? Why not um, paint a beautiful scenery? Calligraphy because um, I'm, I'm a Muslim and I've told for me, I, I'm not allowed to um, paint uh, something that depicts life. So since the beginning, um, I y used to uh, draw and sketch the graffiti letters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just kept doing that um, from the beginning. And, uh, and it just went on. I never really uh, bothered learning uh, depiction or, or painting a scenery. I just kept doing that from, from the beginning. So. Okay, go ahead. You can do this. Um, no, and, and it's interesting that you say that to me, Mohammed. When you came to Buffalo Art Studios a few years ago, you had a very clear vision about what your art was uh, going to do, what you were going to do as an artist, and you wanted to convey those messages through calligraphy. And the word that you used that really struck me was calligraffiti, and that idea of that public graffiti, that street element, but also combining it with your very sophisticated and, um, and a historically significant art form. Can you speak a little bit about that history of calligraphy and that tradition of calligraphy and how you studied that? Um, calligraphy, uh, which is basically a, um, the beautiful uh, classic of, uh, calligraphy uh, mixture with the street art, um, a combination of both which creates uh, calligraphy. Um, and my my background is in uh, as a Muslim. Well, I studied Arabic, and I grew up in a home where you know Arabic was important. And also from Bangladesh, being from Bangladesh and being living in America, I'm mixing three languages together. And uh, I'm inspired by graffiti uh, and graffiti artists a lot. Um, and um, I, so you know, uh, mixing three of them mm -hmm. together makes it kind of graffiti. 
And I think it's interesting you sp spoke a little bit within this theme of home, that in your home in Bangladesh, that you were already in a bilingual household, right? You were already speaking Engl or Arabic and Bengal in your house. Because the Arabic is, is used in your religious ceremonies, and that's what would have been the language of, of your, uh, your religion, correct? Yes. Right. And so when you, came to, when you came to Buffalo, when you came to the U.S., how long did it take you to learn English? Had you learned English um, prior? Not really. Um, of course, the, the basics were, were taught in the school. Mm -hmm. um, but, but as far as speaking English, uh, it took me a few years to get adjusted and, and uh, you know, force myself to go out there and talk to people. And uh, I'm still learning, mm -hmm. still learning. And, uh, you know, it took me a few years to um, get a good grasp on English. Mm -hmm. and, and then to introduce it, in, go ahead and you can pay. And to introduce it into your artwork, I think, um, you know, it's, uh, people will learn to speak a language before they learn to write it. I think it's, it's really beautiful the way you've, incur you've uh, added it into your, your artwork. And I do have to say that when you came to Buffalo Art Studios, it was clear to me that you were using this idea of calligraphy in um, a unique way, a way I hadn't seen. Um, but I did do some research, and I have discovered that calligraphy, particularly in the Middle East, is, is a pretty common, um, I don't want to say common, but it, it does occur, and it is very often a public art form and a way to get across a message. And I know in your work, um, the messages often revolve around a theme, but what would you say is a larger theme? I know we have here beautiful buffalo. What, is the, what are the messages that you're embedding in your artwork as you're writing these phrases? So I try my best to um, create a message or pick a, uh, cho uh, choose a message which uh, which combines, um, you know, or brings together um, the very uh, socially op opposed group of people together. Uh, they're somehow, you know, embedded into my background um, and uh, make an artwork which is um, common um, to to the three different opposite background of people together and, and hopefully bring them together into something beautiful. And I think you do that. I, I think that um, as somebody, one of the wonderful things about being a curator, keep painting, one of the wonderful things about being a curator is I get to see how people react and interact with your artwork. And I know that uh, our audiences, we've worked with very young children. Muhammad and I worked with People's Park, which is located outside of Buffalo Arts, outside of the TriMain building, a wonderful public park. And with funding from the Art Service Initiative, their de decentralization grant, we worked with um, several groups of young people to create uh, a public mural. But also they got to come in and look at your artwork in the gallery, and they really were instantly struck by how uh, beautiful it is. They were able to appreciate it on that level. And then they were drawn into trying to understand they knew it was letters and they were able to find some and I think what was exciting for me was when they had a chance to read the labels and they would see the message and they really did understand these messages of peace and understanding um, of looking inward and finding things that unite um, you can I want to invite everybody in the audience you can comment you can ask questions and you can share for Facebook live this is an interactive experience, and I hope that people do feel that they can ask questions. Um, and between Muhammad and myself, we should be able to answer it, don't you think, Muhammad? Yeah. We've been doing this a while, and it's wonderful. So I say we've been doing this a while. How long have you been with Buffalo Art Studios? Um, I've been in Buffalo Art Studios for about what, two and a half years, I but, think. Yeah. And we've worked closely together. Yes. Um, Muhammad had a large exhibition here this past summer. And that was made possible in part by another wonderful Buffalo organization that I want to credit, and that's Open Buffalo. And they chose Muhammad as their uh, 2018 emerging artist. And that was an opportunity just to support an artist who was promoting or whose, um, whose values align with the values of the organization of Open Buffalo. And they helped with some extra funding and marketing support. So they were part of what we were able to do our exhibition this summer. Um, and I worked with Muhammad on that. We also worked together to help him um, get his work out there. When a young artist like Muhammad comes into Buffalo Art Studios, somebody with, who clearly has so much talent, we want to make sure that people can see his work. 
And um, right now you have an exhibition at the Ross Steiner Gallery in Batavia, correct? Yes, And then you also have some public art. So yes, people do, and whether they know it or not, people are seeing your artwork around, around our community, around Buffalo, and you have helped make Buffalo a really wonderful and beautiful place. Where are some of the places that you have either, I know you have your, your newest mural that you worked with, the Albright Knox. Where exactly is that one? Um, it's on the east side, a um, few blocks from Broadway Market. Um, I believe it's at 30, I forgot the address. Broadway, it's Broadway and Fillmore, right? Yes, Broadway, the, Fillmore, Broadway Fillmore, um, Fillmore, about five or six blocks from Broadway Market. I think 30, 31 Broadway, if I'm not mistaken. 31. I think it's exciting, this idea about home, and you, you know, you've come to, to uh, Buffalo, um, but I think it's also interesting to me as a curator to look at how far you've come in your career. Do you think two, two and a half years ago you would have believed that you would have just finished a project with the Albright Knox, a major international museum? Uh, no, no, I have not. Um, you know, um, having a studio here, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a huge blessing. And uh, yeah, they, they saw my work when they visited. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took us about, about a year or so of work, um, and uh, last summer we finally did it. Yep. And it takes a long time to plan something like that. I think people maybe don't understand that it's a year of planning before you can, you know, make that kind of a, a, an impact. Also because of our beautiful Buffalo weather, the mural season is relatively short here. It's not maybe as long as it would be in some other places. So, you know, you've come so far, you've had some major exhibitions here, you've been included in several Birchfield Penny art shows. You are, have a, a solo show right now. Um, you know, when you think about when you were younger, when exactly you know, did you come to Buffalo, and what are some of those memories you have when you were, from when you were a child? Um, we moved to Buffalo around 2003. I was 12 years old, um, new place. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the language. Um, it was very... Um, alone, I had a lot of time to myself, which gave me, uh, which allowed me to really, uh, you know, draw and, and uh, do things on my own. And um, yes, at that time it was difficult, but now that I think about it, it's been a huge blessing because that created some interest um, as a for for art in me within me, because um, a lot of a lot of the time when I was to be alone now draw, sketch graffiti letters and different letters, and that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a day job. This is your job. Uh, at this point, yes. This is your job. Okay, on Facebook, Heather asks, um, is he staying that straight without a guideline across the canvas? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, you do this... Um, what I think is impressive is not only are you writing and staying straight, but for people that don't realize, you do this at a lot of different scales. Yes. So this is a certain gesture. Um, you do it very small. You can do it as though you really were writing something. But also on the murals, and even when you did the large canvas that was part of Trimania that you yes. painted live, each letter was maybe three feet. Yes, about roughly, roughly about three feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is part of the skill that he has. This is his medium and his, really his lovely approach um, to to making these canvases. And he just and he keeps layering. So you were twelve. You were here in Buffalo, and you spent a lot of time alone, and, and you spent a lot of time making art. Um, I think what's exciting under this again this idea of making Buffalo your home. I think there are probably a lot of artists out there who would have a similar story at twelve, not just those that immigrated to Western New York that many artists at that time start to discover what making art means to them. And very often it is that time when they're figuring out who they are as a person and it happens in that space. But you're not working alone anymore. Um, you're part of this community here in Buffalo Art Studios. What is being a part of the Buffalo Art Studios art community, what does that mean to you? What has that done for you? Of course, um, as a self uh, person, um, at the beginning, I, the reason for me joining Buffalo Art Studio was one of the reasons was to really uh, get to know people, other creatives in Buffalo, and learn from them, ask questions, and um, gain knowledge. Um, that, in a big way, Buffalo Art Studio helped me um, uh, to do that. I was able to 
go to people if I like something that someone made, I would go and ask them how it was made. Simple things like you know how to buy can where to buy canvases from, where to buy paint from, uh, stuff like where which type of paste to use. You know, um, it's been a huge help um, from from um, the Buffalo Studio community. Mm -hmm. And you keep, you keep painting now, and I can talk a little bit about that, I think, from the Buffalo Art Studios end. Um, for those of you that don't know, Buffalo Art Studios is a public space. It's housed in the Tri-Main Center. We're up on the fifth floor in Suite um, 500. And we have two art galleries. We also have a community space. We have an education component. And we have 35 artists who make their art on site. And they are called our resident artists, and Muhammad is one of them. So when he talks about being part of an artistic or an artist community, it, it's, we're not talking about that in sort of a, in a theoretical sense. It's very real. We have artists that are working in the space on the other side of the wall, across the hall. And that does provide a wealth of knowledge, how to frame um, somebody even whose work might look very different. One of the studios just... 10 feet from here is an artist who works a lot on paper and she frames her work and Muhammad when he was working on paper could go and talk to her name is Kathy Sharon and talk to Kathy and get some uh, advice on um, framing his work and sometimes those practical things as Muhammad said where to buy canvas where to get your work framed that's really important inf information in our industry just as those practical things are important in any industry and he was able to access those artists and their knowledge and really make the most of it. Um, I'm glad that people are here on Facebook. Um, we have another question. Are you planning on doing any more murals in and around the city of Buffalo? Do you have anything else in the, in the queue there, Muhammad? Not at this time, but hopefully soon. <laughs> Not at this, but hopefully soon. Yeah, you're really, it's, it's, um, your work translates large. It, it's really quite, quite beautiful. And people who are excited, they should follow you on Instagram. Um, how many followers do you have now, Muhammad? It's crazy. How many? Um, well, Instagram is an interesting place. <laughs> um, about 19,000. About 19,000. So if it's not clear, well, yeah, Muhammad Instagram. is shy and very humble. So this is a man you're watching, this man paint, who has had um, work you know, through, through the Albright Knox, he has actually had his work shown internationally, and he has over 19,000 followers on Instagram. Um, one of the things that was interesting to me as somebody who follows you on Instagram, both as a painter and just as a friend, is you, you go to the Albright Knox a lot. Yes. How has having that resource here in Buffalo, this major international museum, how has that influenced your work and your process? Um, is it going back to uh, teaching myself to do this. Um, Albert Knox has been a huge asset because I'm able to go there and always compare my work mm -hmm. to, to the works that's shown there and you know uh, hopefully someday I hope someday my work is uh, you know, hanging in Albert Knox but uh, um, I, I go there a lot to really uh, reflect and, and see if I if my work is improving or compare myself or mm -hmm. compare my work with the works that's hanging on on, the, on those walls, I think it's interesting. Go ahead, keep painting. Um, I think that people have this misconception that artists work in a vacuum; they work all by themselves. And really, artists are always looking at each other's work. They're always learning. In fact, um, there's a wonderful book that I love called "Steal Like an Artist." And when I look at your work, I do see some really interesting. Um, elements that are familiar to um, what is a bedrock to the Albright Knox collection, which is the abstract expressionists. And I think if people look at the painting behind you, there is no foreground or background. It's, it's endless in the way you layer and layer and layer. And although you're using text, you really have this quality of no beginning and no end. And of course, that makes me think of Jackson Pollock, and it makes me think of some of the other artists in the collection. So it's always fun to see when you go what it is you're stopping in front of and what you're, what you're contemplating. Um, I think it really helps as someone who's following your career to see some of those influences happening in real, real time and real space. Now you let the paint 
So I think something people might not realize is you're letting some of the gray tones, the tones between the white and the black, are happening organically, correct? Yes. And um, also normal cases, I would let the, the layers dry overnight, then do a clear coat, then come back and do the next layer. But in this case, we're just, you know, for the purpose of demonstration, we're just clearing mm -hmm. the canvas. Right, so you're letting it, you're, you're keeping going. So normally you would do sort of one layer yes. instead of overlapping yes. so that one stroke doesn't necessarily change the yes. stroke prior. So it's a, it's a pretty time intense yes, process. That's a question people ask as somebody that's worked in this industry for a long time. How long did it take? How, how long did it take? Or ta uh, how long for, um, or does it take to finish a canvas? Um, the writing itself is, is fairly quick. But the process of um, you know letting the paint dry, then the clear coat, then do the next layer. Roughly, each canvas takes about a month to finish. About a month. Yes. And that's something I think when people look at the prices of artwork, they're sort of struck. They don't recognize it's the materials, it's the time, and the thought. The thought. I know you're very thoughtful. I know you you spent a lot of time thinking about this and about your your phrases. You want to change colors? Now, how do you keep the paint from getting on your hand? Just being uh, careful? Yeah, try my best to be careful. I, mean, I, don't, I don't really mind being, mm -hmm. you know, painted all over myself. In this right. Right. Well, most of the artists don't mind that either. So let's talk a little bit more, and, and hopefully you can, you can keep painting, about your early days here. So you were about 12, and you said you really were struck. Um, you, you felt a little bit isolated, while you didn't know the language and you worked on your art. What else can you tell us about, did you go to public school? No, I went to Islamic school. You went to Islamic school. Okay. And um, how did you make connections with your, with your community? And where did you, where did you live? Because I think that's an interesting story um, too, your family, when your family arrived. We, um, we moved to um, East Side because, um, because of the mosque and my dad wanted us to go to um, the Islamic school and the whole um, school system because you know he wanted us to not lose our roots mm -hmm. and uh, study um, Islam and which is itself is a beautiful um, but uh, you know I didn't really have any artistic uh, training but uh, eventually I just moved out and you know just got a little bit you know uh, we moved to the east side of the floor we lived, uh, lived there since Mm -hmm. And is there is there a community um, that your father knew when he came? Um, in that in that you said the mosque mm -hmm. was there. A, did he have a connection to the mosque community yes, there um, already? We, we, we not from before after we moved in uh, after we moved to Buffalo. You know, you go to the mosque five times a day. You automatically make you know, friends and, and you know you have some sort of community. But we were the first community family that moved to mm -hmm. Buffalo. Um, for for us, which was difficult, but you know, eventually, uh, more people started moving in, and you know, it got easier. Mm -hmm. So Jamie asks, where are some of your where are some of your upcoming shows, and where can they buy your artwork? I know you have a show right now at the Ross Steiner um, Gallery in Batavia, and that's a large and show. A, um, a show at our Ross Steiner uh, uh, Gallery up right now, and also we we're having a group show at uh, uh, Kinnan Center. Right, right. Yeah, there's a, a, a show. With the uh, Art Studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, to buy my artwork, you can buy from the studio. We have a gallery representation from 1120. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, Art Collective in Rochester. So there's lots of places. Yes. So there is, so Muhammad, well, I can talk a little bit about this, and you oh. And and you and you can, um, and maybe paint a little bit more. So right now you have the show at the Ross Diner. Uh, and does the show at the Keenan Center opens on Sunday? Correct. Yes, ma'am. So the Keenan Center in Lockport is going to have an exhibition with um, a, a number of artists from Buffalo Art Studios, and that'll be available there. Um, he has representation by a commercial gallery, and that is 1120. That's John Fada's gallery. And then here, we also have his work here. 
Uh, sometimes the studio is very full. Right now, because his work is out in so many places, it isn't as full as it, it can be. We also want to talk, another place you can get Muhammad's artwork, and it, it'll be quite affordable, is um, Plates and Pasta. So Buffalo Art Studios on March 30th has an event called Plates and Pasta, and um, we have over 100 artists that have painted on cups and on plates, and I actually have a Muhammad cup that I'm drinking my, my water out of. And uh, so that's another place where people will be able to get your work is on, at Plates and Pasta on March 30th. Um, and the tradition of, of painting on a plate or a cup or another object, that is part of the, uh, the Islamic tradition in art, isn't it, Muhammad? Yes, um, they do calligraphy on walls, uh, vases, decoration, plates, mm -hmm. everything. So someday I would like to do that. And what have you, I know, I know offhand, I know some of the things. What are some of the objects you've you um, I have decorated? painted, um, I have painted vase, uh, leather jackets, shoes, anything that's paintable. I'll, I'll try one. Skateboards? Skateboards. Yeah, people are always really excited, especially students when they come in and they see the skateboards that you've done. Um, and the leather jacket was amazing. I've always said Rihanna. If anybody has a connection with Rihanna, she should be wearing that amazing uh, jacket. So you, you found a wonderful community here. Um, you're also a father. Yes. And you have two young children. How do you think their experience of making Buffalo home um, will be different maybe from your own? Um, you know, over 15 or 16 years that we have moved to Buffalo, it has, it has changed a lot um, compared to how it was before. Um, you know, we were the first Bengali family that moved, but right now I think there's probably over close to uh, five to six hundred families, or if not more, um, they live around the same area. And I, I think, I hope, or at least I hope that, you know, it will be easier and, you know, they'll be able to make more friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know. And I think you, you know, and I know this is part of your mission as an artist, um, is to help people understand um, more about your, your roots and your community and also about your religion. Um, you know, I think you're, you're doing a, a wonderful job. Um, if somebody else has a question and you have any comments, please feel free to interact and send them on Facebook Live. We can uh, integrate them into this conversation. Muhammad and I uh, could probably chat all day, but we'd love to have more input from people that don't know him as well as I do. And uh, so you're going to switch to the black now? Yes. Is it great? Yeah. So you're layering the colors, you're layering the letters, you're layering the text. And do you understand now a little bit as a parent yourself, maybe some of the drive that your father had to keep those cultural connections to your homeland, to, Bangla to Bangladesh yes. as an American? Do you think yes. it's going to be harder with your own children? It, it could be because, you know, when you move, when you... Mm -hmm. um, move from one place to another and you leave everything behind you know you it, in some way or another you tend to lose some part of it and you know I will try my best to keep them um, uh, connected with the roots but I think eventually they will um, you know they will have their own traditions and cultures and you know but uh, hopefully hopefully they will have their own do you imagine your son at 12 thinking about who he is and finding his, his future and his talent and his drive the way you, yeah, you landed uh, on calligraphy? calligraphy? I mean, uh, he's, he's quite something. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, is he four? He's, he's four. He's four, um, and he's he, very good at it. Yes, he's, he's four, and he's, he's really uh, energetic, and, and uh, he likes to draw, paint, and mm -hmm. he likes to play with my stuff a lot so I, I, I let him mm -hmm. uh, I think hopefully it feels like he might do something similar as I am. Mm -hmm. And had you seen um, people, had you seen artists, uh, Islamic artists when you were growing up, had you, had you, did you have somebody that you could model your career on? Um, not at the early uh, mm -hmm. uh, stages but when I was learning calligraphy or when I was learning to um, do art and uh, I, I looked up uh, al Said a lot, he's a French Tunisian graffiti artist, um, uh, Zephyr, uh, he's also uh, Moroccan and uh, French mixed um, graffiti, um, Middle Eastern graffiti artist um, and yeah, you know, I, I, I 
I look look them up and I, I still love their work and I still do look at their work as a you know as to something to inspire and yeah what do you think it means to young I mean, we have a relationship with the international school. They bring their students in. What do you think it means to a young man or woman um, who is uh, maybe an immigrant to this country and, um, you know, that they can come and see a rising art star like yourself and see someone who looks like them, who thinks like them, who believes and shares that faith with them? What do you think that means to that young person? <laughs> if, if someday there, there is someone like that, I'm honored. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, it, it, I, know I know you're very humble. I know you're very, keep <laughs> painting. I know that happens more than you think. We have a relationship with Journey's End. We bring people through and tour. And, um, you know, I think that we forget so often that for our young people, um, their art education involves looking at uh, a lot of old dead white guys, as I like to say. And I think it's exciting for young people to see artists who share some of their um, traditions and some of their core beliefs and who in fact look like them and that's something that's wonderful about you being here in the Buffalo Arts Studios and your work being here. Um, I think about those children when we were out in the park, in People's Park and also when you, you were very generous, you gave them each a gift. Um, they, Muhammad while he was working with the young people, they were giving us ideas about the park and writing down ideas they had. And Muhammad took all of these ideas and developed a phrase and painted this three panel mural. And while he was doing that, um, for each of these children, he uh, created a little card with their first initial on it. And they got to take that home with them. And think about that when we were handing those cards out and those children were putting them on strings around their necks. How how did they how do you think they felt about that Muhammad I think uh, I, I was, uh, they were happy and they, they were had really good, happy <laughs> they had good time yeah I think that's something that your work does for people I know you talk about this idea of beautiful buffalo um, and these ideas of peace and understanding and and breeding a better understanding of who you are as a person and what your religion stands for. Um, and I can tell you when I think about those children sitting there with that giant smile and they were just so excited um, about, about your work. Now I'm looking here at these tones that are coming up. Um, do you prefer working, I know the painting that beh is behind you is also in black and white, do you prefer black and white or do you like working in color? My, my favorite is black and white, but uh, also I do work in colors. Um, we don't have anything close by, but yeah, we, I, I, I do it all. I like the black and white work, I, I think, um, you know, when we talk about the idea of home, I have one of your pieces in my home, and it does uh, help my home feel special. And I think that's like those children that had the card. You know, when you have something that is not only beautiful but meaningful and handmade, it is such a wonderful gift. And I have, I have one of your pieces in my home, and it makes it it makes it wonderful and special. Um, this is really, you're getting good at this, Muhammad, at painting and talking at the same time. Hmm? Um, I'm impressed. I know that this was this was new for you. I know you're very shy, and just talking about your work is, doesn't always come easy. I think it probably would have been easier for you to just paint and for me to just talk at you the whole time. So you have um, a couple things coming up this winter, and then when you head into the spring, do you have any 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 big shows? For the spring, I don't have anything scheduled yet. Yet, yet. well, that doesn't uh, mean it won't I mean, happen. Last year, last year was a um, was really a busy year for us. Mm -hmm. um, we had two two solo shows, um, and third one being in January, which is pretty much attached to 2008, mm -hmm. and um, group shows with Buffalo Studios, and um, there was another with. Uh, um, um, uh, a museo, or sometimes museo, around the right. uh, beginning of the year, then then the mural mm -hmm. uh, with Albert Knox, and, and and the mural with People People's Park. So, so I, I think this year it might just go a little easy and make work. I yes. think sometimes people don't understand that that it can take an artist. You can see him working here, and as he said, it can take a month to do a painting. So um, it might 
to, you know, it might take a year for an artist like Muhammad to build up a, a collection large enough for another set of solo shows. And you do work, your work ethic is incredible. Um, I, you know, you, I come in here daily and I can see the progress that you've made. Um, now, when you, uh, so you were taking classes as a, as a young person and learning about calligraphy. Where did you find the space to translate this traditional art form of calligraphy to more of a street art, to the graffiti part of it? Uh, when did you see that marriage of ideas for yourself and in your work? Well, <clears throat> at the beginning I was trying to learn the classic Arabic text, and, and it's an ancient art, so it comes with a whole set of rules and, uh, and regulations which you have to follow certain letters, that has to be certain sizes, and you know, you can do that, you can do this. Um, and to learn those, you have to actually go to a teacher mm -hmm. um, and learn from him, and you have to make sure he has learned from another teacher, and you know, chain goes back probably a thousand years. Um, I couldn't find anyone like that in Buffalo. Uh, only person I found was uh, was uh, Dr. Arif Amjad. He's a um, professor at UB, or at least at that time he was a he was professor at UB, and he he would um, check my work to see. Uh, if it's correct or, or, or wrong at mm -hmm. the beginning. Then uh, also, you know, I, I used to go back and forth with him and I got frustrated and I started, you know, looking at um, Google to see what else is out there with calligraphy. Um, I found, I uh, discovered, I'll say that discovered uh, Hassan Masoudi, for example. Um, I'll say there's a uh, French Tunisian graffiti artist, Hassan Masoudi, he's a, a contemporary calligrapher, he's not a graffiti artist. Um, he, you know, and I, when I saw them, I thought, you know, if they can do it, I can also maybe come up with something mm -hmm. and uh, went from there. So what, um, why don't you, you can go ahead and paint. So when, what I'm going to do, Mohammed, is we're going to put this video um, on our Facebook page for Buffalo Art Studios. It'll also be available on WNED. But I can also link some of those names that you're saying. I know you're saying them quickly, and I think that can help other people see and understand what you were looking at. And on Facebook, we have uh, um, Adir says, I came in late. Can you tell us what this says? And it says, beautiful buffalo. And I'm going to let, let you paint for a little bit. Um, and this is very traditional uh, kind of uh, uh, a message in Muhammad's work. It's always positive. It is always um, a message that he repeats. He combines three languages for those of you that were having a hard time reading it. It's because it is a combination of Arabic, English, and Bengal. And it is the three languages that are Muhammad's languages, and they're the languages of his homeland and the language of his religion and his language of, the land, of, of, of his home now. Um, and it's interesting to see and think about how that will come together um, in his own children. He has a, a four-year-old and a, she too? Or she's, she's, two. she's two, so yes. she's probably just starting to talk. Yes. Um, and to see that in, in another generation in his work. Um, now, when you are overlapping the letters and you're thinking about the term like we use in the, in the art world, the composition, is it something you're giving a lot of thought to or does it seem just sort of natural to you now that you just sort of know where they should go? At this point, this is very organic and mm -hmm. it just come, it comes to me. Um, um, when I started learning or when I started doing the layers, uh, it used to take a lot of planning, but uh, right now it feels um, very natural. And I think a lot of artists would say that when they're working um, in their whatever their their formal style is, whether it's setting up a landscape or an abstract, you find the space that is comfortable for you visually and that works, and it becomes something that's difficult to articulate when it's really part of your process. And uh, you know, it's it's interesting when you try and teach those ideas to somebody. Uh, and again, as we said, Muhammad, because you're not a classically trained artist, you learned a lot of this by looking yes. at artists and looking at um, and using the assets that are available here in your community and, yes. and in our wonderful Western New York home. And I think about, again, Buffalo, uh, the Albright Knox collection. Who else, when you go to the Albright, is there somebody you have to go stand in front of their painting, You something you um, have to see every time? I, I don't have anything particular. Uh, probably um, the orange rod coat. The I orange usually rod coat. just just stand there for a little bit before before I actually explore the museum. 
kind of gives me some sense of calmness and you know gets gets rid of a lot of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's interesting. Um, there is you know Rothko. Uh, there was certainly a meditative quality to his work, and that was part of how he painted and why. And, and I often use that word uh, when I talk about your work. That um, another word we use in the art world is it's performative, meaning that you're not just writing, you're really thinking about these ideas. The act of making the art is part of the meaning, that you're thinking about these ideas, in this case, beautiful buffalo, um, this beautiful homeland, or you're thinking about ideas of peace, about understanding one another. And sometimes the messages are very personal to you. I think about um, some of the paintings where you were reminding yourself to slow down. And I think that that was interesting that that came um, when you were really making a lot of artwork for all those shows we just talked about, that reminding yourself to slow down and think. Um, you know, now, a, a few minutes ago, there were some horns beeping in the back, because, of course, we're in Buffalo. But that made me think about, um, in connection also with the graffiti, about the influence of the trains it's on your work. So what about, you know, you lived in this east side neighborhood. The trains ran by where you lived. How did seeing those trains and hearing those trains and the graffiti on the trains, how did that influence your work, especially when you were, when you were a teenager and finding yourself in this, this process? So trains were, when, when we moved to Buffalo, my dad started um, a business of fixing houses and, you know, um, renting, out to, uh, renting them out. And we would go to Home Depot a lot, check out the Home Depot, and on our way there, um, a train track comes and, and uh, yeah, and they, it's, it's like a pretty much uh, ever-changing uh, outdoor museum because not not a, not every train train is same and they're painted differently and and uh, when I when I when I saw that the first time or when I saw saw those trains few times and you know I, I was I was I used to write letters and and stuff and I figured this that's something that eventually I would like to do and and I didn't know if it was going to turn into a career or something that I <laughs> I do to live off but um, at that point, it was just something nice and something that you know inspired me, and I, I used to do them. The idea of going from tagging trains to yes. to, to these large <laughs> canvases and murals. Yes. Um, but I think that that's an important idea too. That you saw artwork in public, out in the world, and it impacted you. Um, you know, your murals. I think uh, you have a real commitment to public art. You know, there, we can talk about street art, and one of the things that I often said when I taught was that street art is a little bit subversive. <laughs> we don't always have the, they don't always have permission. Um, Jamie. Uh, Jamie asks, are you also working with the geometric metric patterns as seen on the wall above you? So you have some of these more abstract pieces. I think that that's so, what they're asking about. So is it... Um, uh -huh. As I teach myself, which is a continuous journey that I would probably have to do for the rest of my life, um, you know, so, sometimes you're making work with your own style, but sometimes that you have those creative urges that you have to, something that you have to do. So, so geometric uh, works, they're just some, something that I, I just did it out of instinct. And I think it's interesting for people to look. Um, one of the things that's great about visiting Buffalo Art Studios is you see some of the experiments. I think when we go to a major museum or a, a solo exhibition, you see the masterpieces. You see the things that worked out, that the artist has selected. But when you come to an artist's studio, you get to see the things that are in process and sometimes the failures, sometimes the things that didn't work out at all. And that's, I think, an important thing for people, especially young people, to see that um, every piece isn't a masterpiece. In fact, many pieces are experiments and are places where you're learning and you're pushing yourself. And some artists will go through a whole period where they're transitioning their style or their mediums. And through that, they come out into another really great place. But it isn't always the direct line that I think sometimes public school or even life, we pretend, we think it's going to be a straight line. And, and it's not. It's actually much more like your calligraphy, right? Yes. It's layered and, and we see different colors and different tones.
Now, when you title this, will you title it Beautiful Buffalo? I know oftentimes the titles of your work are the, the phrase yes. or the meaning. Yeah. When it's finished. What's the title of the piece right behind you? Um, hate is Pointless. And uh, again, uh, <clears throat> the letters are going from different directions and going on top of each other. The idea of, of being able to read, read the canvas, it kind of disappears. And uh, what you were left with are uh, some representation of those three languages or three uh, different letters from those three different languages. And, uh, you know, which uh, allows you to interact with the piece and try to figure out the message by yourself without reading the card. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that kind of, um, that creates kind of push and pull um, effect. Mm -hmm. And I think that title, Hate is Pointless, is, is powerful in our current, our current moment here today. I mean, we hear in the news there um, are very strong views about immigration and a lot of misinformation about both immigration and immigrants themselves. Um, you know, these, the, that commentary can be pretty divisive and pretty, um, sometimes it's very focused on, on hateful ideas. Um, does that have an impact on your work that when you hear these and you know you hear what people the misinformation they're saying people that don't know you or don't know anything about you the assumptions that they make yes sometimes um you know the the reason behind this work or reason when I what you know I started this is to uh connect people with something that that was different from them mm -hmm. um the whole uh the idea of immigration to me, for me, is, you know, we are human beings and uh, some some of us just have to, uh, had, you know, unfortunate uh, luck of living in a different place or being born in a different place. And, you know, uh, they're also human and just like just like me and you, we're, they're also human and they're just trying to do their best to um, create, create a better life for, for themselves. And what is going on in the media, what is going on in the media. Um, it's really, uh, I think, uh, it's really unfortunate, but uh, hopefully someday uh, with doing this type of work and uh, having programs, hopefully someday we'll be able to change that idea. I think, you know, Mohammed, I think you are doing really good work. I think, uh, I think we believe in the power of art to affect change. And when you say, you're hoping to connect people, I can tell you you are. I see people come here and connect and I think that people can look at your work and see that it's beautiful and that it's powerful even if they can't read the message. Um, but I actually, and I agree with you on the, the message as well, that hate is pointless. It's always, um, I think, important you know, to point out the truth even when it feels like it's being drowned out by lies. I see every day here in this building, down, working down the hall from Journey's End, and, and knowing you, how hard you work and how much you do to make not just your community on the east side, your neighborhood, your, your mosque, but the Western New York community beautiful. I see how generous you are with your time and your talents. And, um, and I thank you. I thank you for how much work you do. And I, I hope people see it. I hope people see it. Um, well, very good, Mohammed, and I think you got a lot done. I, uh, I, I know that this is not an easy thing for you to do. Um, today's Facebook Live event is part of the WNED, WBFO Making Buffalo Home series, and it is supported again by Rich Products and the Rich Family Foundation, so thank you for that. The video of this conversation will be available on the WNED website at wned.org backslash making buffalo home. It will also be available on the Buffalo Arts Studios website and on our Facebook page. So we encourage you to visit and continue to be interactive. We'll be responding. Muhammad can respond on both Facebook pages as well. And we're going to put some links to some of his um, artists and influences. And we're at buffaloartstudios.org. And he's going to keep painting here for a little while, and we'll see if he gets a few more inches. And again, you can probably imagine how this would take a month if this is layer one of many. So thank you all. Thank you, Rich Projects, our products. Thank you, WNED. And thank you, of course, Muhammad. Thank you. It'll be there.